Seismite Motion Engineering Internship Day 4, Learning About Tsunami Warning Systems. A reminder that you can access your digital resources in the lesson brief of every lesson. Even though activities are available in Amplify Lessons, you will be working in the Futura Workspace. You can find the Futura Workspace in your Amplify main menu. In this lesson, we obtain and evaluate information about how different types of tsunami sensors function, structure and function, we test how these sensors perform in the digital model in order to begin designing the best locations for sensors based on the relationship between plate boundaries and earthquakes, or patterns. Activity 1, Connecting to Futura Workspace. You'll read and pin today's message, Tsunami Warning Systems. Then you'll add to your daily message notes by creating a new header with today's date and message topic. Students, open Futura Workspace and read the daily message from the project director. Remember that the new message, titled Day 4, Tsunami Warning Systems, should be at the top of the inbox and that you should pin the message. Add notes at the top of your existing daily message notes with the new heading, Day 4, Tsunami Warning Systems. All of the notes you take for this message should fall under this heading. Ensure that you are clear on your tasks for the day. Annotating Chapter 4, Completing the Sensor Analysis, After Hours, Completing the Project Summary. Activity 2, Reading About Tsunami Warning Systems. You'll need the maps that you annotated during the last workday. Let's review your map, research, and how it connects to placing sensors into tsunami warning systems. Students, locate your annotated maps in the Tsunami Alert Design Tool and set the Landformer slider to the right as you review the following questions. What are the landforms in the Indian Ocean region, and which types of plate boundaries do they correspond with? Did the earthquake data from the design tool help you refine any of your plate boundaries? Which areas are more likely to have earthquakes that can cause tsunamis? Why? How does this information help you plan your warning system designs? What do you need to know about the sensors you can use in the tsunami warning systems? Some answers may include mountains and ocean trenches at convergent boundaries, mid-ocean ridges at divergent boundaries, along the convergent boundaries, along the edge of the islands from K6 to N11, along the shore from C3 to E3, and through the mountains from E1 to L2. We should put sensors near these convergent boundaries. Today, you'll continue your research by reading Chapter 4. You'll learn about how tsunami warning systems work and how different types of sensors function. Now that you have a better understanding of where earthquakes that cause tsunamis occur in this region, and which tsunamis are likely to reach the shores of, shores of Sri Lanka, You'll need to learn about the different sensors. You will use this information to analyze the sensor types, which will help you strategize which sensors to use based on the project criteria. Your choice of sensors will affect how, you design, how your design meets the three criteria. Maximize average warning time. Minimize false alarms. Keep costs low. You'll need to learn about how each type of sensor functions in a warning system. You'll also learn about each sensor's structure, how it's built, which affects its function what it does. You'll read the chapter the way an engineer would, making annotations of questions and connections related to this focus question. You can open the dossier using the link in the daily message. Read and annotate chapter 4, Tsunami Warning Systems, in the dossier. Students, use the table of contents to navigate to chapter 4, Tsunami Warning Systems. Actively read and annotate this section of the dossier. Stop when you get to the subheading, Sensor Types. Discuss your questions and annotations for Chapter 4. Students, if you are submitting your annotations, do so now. Let's discuss what you read about tsunami warning systems in Chapter 4. Share your questions and annotations. What was the answer to our focus question, how do tsunami warning systems work? You might respond, tsunami warning systems use several combinations of sensors to detect changes in the environment, like earthquakes, and changes in the ocean water level or pressure. The sensors send data to scientists who decide if a tsunami warning should be issued. There needs to be enough good data to send a warning to help protect people. Sensor, a device that detects information in its environment and responds. Tsunami warning systems can be quite complicated, but the major component are the sensors that detect earthquakes and tsunamis and respond by sending their data to scientists for interpretation. Each sensor type has a different structure and serves a different function. Hannah wants you to analyze them all. You'll use a sensor analysis sheet. Students, view the sensor analysis sheet. With your partner, you will reread and discuss Chapter 4. This time, you'll focus on the section called Sensor Types. 
Remember, engineers read documents more than once. As you reread, continue to think about our focus question. How do tsunami warning systems work? Think about how you might use these sensors in your tsunami warning systems. As you read about each sensor type, you record whether that sensor is best for detecting earthquakes, local tsunamis, or ocean-wide tsunamis. You will also record where you can place each type of sensor, on land, in deep water, or in shallow water. Finally, you'll write notes about the pros and cons of each type of sensor. Pros are reasons a sensor might work well in your system, and cons are reason it might not. Reread and discuss the sensor type section in Chapter 4. Use the information to fill in your sensor analysis sheets. Students, revisit the dossier and record the details on your sensor analysis sheets. Which sensor types would you use and where? Explain your thinking and consider plate boundary types, earthquake and tsunami activity, sensor characteristics, project criteria. As you think about where you think you should use the different types of sensors, refer you to your annotated maps of the Indian Ocean region. How did you choose which sensor types to use and where to place them? Earthquake sensors can be used anywhere, send their data very quickly, and rarely break. But they can send data about a tsunami and might give false alarms for a tsunami when it's only an earthquake. Shallow sensors are very cheap with medium reliability, but there's a data delay and they break easily. Deep sensors are very reliable and send data quickly, but they break a lot and are very expensive and are very likely to produce false alarms. Pros and cons are also sometimes called trade-offs. Understanding sensors and tsunami alert. Next, you will place sensors in tsunami alert and run tests to find how they perform. Let's watch a video demonstration of the sensors in the tool. You will need to understand how to interpret the sensor and tsunami warning system data in order to come up with a better tsunami warning system for Sri Lanka. Students, play the video. After you run a test, you'll select each sensor to reveal its sensor summary flag. The data will help you evaluate the sensor's performance. You can select a sensor in the design details list or select its marker on the map. Let's look at some samples together. How can you interpret the data in the summary flag for this sensor? You might respond, this sensor isn't working since it's not helping detect any earthquakes or tsunamis. It also isn't contributing to any false alarms and since it doesn't have extra breaks, it doesn't increase the 50-year cost. In this case, it's a deep sensor placed in shallow water, so it isn't working properly and should be removed or relocated. How could you interpret the data in the summary flag for this sensor? You might respond, this shallow sensor is placed in shallow water and is working because it detected five tsunamis and one of those was a false alarm. The sensor broke from two earthquakes, so it might need to be moved. Local tsunamis that don't hit Sri Lanka can cause false alarms. How could you change the sensor placement to avoid a false alarm like this one? You might respond, remove one or more of the sensors, move the shallow water sensor further away beyond where the local tsunami wave reaches. Big earthquakes that don't generate tsunamis can also cause false alarms. What could you do to avoid a false alarm like this one? You might respond, remove one or more of the sensors, Perhaps there is no need for a deep sensor along that transform boundary in example D because no tsunamis will likely be caused by that plate boundary. You'll need to study the earthquakes to understand how sensors performed. How could you interpret the data for this quake? You might respond, this is an ocean-wide tsunami since it reached Sri Lanka. The earthquake that caused it was a strong 8.2 and on a convergent plate boundary. Sri Lanka did not receive any warning for the tsunami that reached its shores. Zero minutes warning won't help people get to safety. The shallow sensor broke because it was too close to the earthquake. It might have helped give a warning if it didn't break. The earthquake sensor doesn't have a flag, so it didn't detect anything. It's probably too far from the earthquake. The deep sensor sent data, but since there's no other data being sent, the tsunami warning system didn't have enough information to warn Sri Lanka. It's especially important to study every earthquake if to get a result of no or for all necessary warnings received. What could you do to improve the warning time for this earthquake? Move the earthquake sensor closer to help send the necessary warning. Move the shallow sensor further away so it doesn't break. Try adding a different sensor nearby. 
Next, you will work in groups to investigate detections, breaks, and false alarms in Tsunami Alert. I'll assign each group one question to investigate. Exploring sensors with Tsunami Alert. Use different sensors to answer one of these questions. Where must each sensor type be placed in order to detect important information? How close to an earthquake can the sensor be before it breaks? What combinations result in false alarms for Sri Lanka? Students, open Tsunami Alert on your devices and spend a few minutes exploring one or more of these questions. Let's hear from each group. You can add to your censored analysis sheets. What did you discover about detections, breaks, false alarms? You might respond, detections. Earthquake sensors can be placed anywhere but need to be close enough to detect an earthquake within two grid squares. Shallow sensors only work in the shallow water and only when a tsunami wave reaches them. Deep sensors only work in deep water and usually only when a tsunami wave passes them. Breaks. Earthquake sensors never have additional breaks. Shallow sensors can only break within one grid square of an earthquake, but not for magnitudes less than 6.0. Deep sensors have to be very close, half a grid square, to a magnitude 7.0 or greater earthquake to break. False alarms. Some combinations that result in false alarms for Sri Lanka include four earthquake sensors detecting an earthquake greater than a 7.0, a deep sensor and an earthquake sensor detecting an earthquake 7.0 or greater, any local tsunami where two shallow sensors, one shallow and two earthquake sensors, or one shallow and one deep sensor detect the event. Students, you may not have had time to determine all of these details, but you can continue to make careful observations during future tests. In the next workday, you will begin designing your tsunami warning systems. You'll need to keep in mind all of your research on plate boundaries, earthquakes, and tsunami activity, and different sensor types. Activity 3. After Hours Work For this task, you'll complete the project summary form. It will give you the chance to record some of your early ideas about warning system designs. The project summary form will be submitted to Hannah so she can see what you understand about the project. For this next task, you'll talk to a member of your household and explain why Sri Lanka is at risk for tsunamis. To do this, you'll need to complete the Exploring Tsunamis at Home form. Students, complete the after hours work. End of day four.